subsequent mastering of space is inevitably connected with assembling complicated structures in orbit. Orbital echo stations, factories producing new materials, global complexes for weather and climate control, astrophysical instruments for universe investigation. These are the objectives for future. But even today, while planning these objectives, it is necessary to take into account the man's role in orbit. How long without harm for health could people work in space conditions? The answer to this question could be given only by the direct experiment, the experiment with man participation. Since April 1971, the Salute orbital stations have become the permanent means of space research. The station configuration is continuously modified. The research program is enlarged in different fields of science and technology. And the main thing, the mission duration grows up 24, 30 days, 60, 96, 140, 175 days. How will the subsequent increase of flight time influence the human organism? Each forward step contains a lot of unknown. But this way is the only possible. The Salute 6 station launched to orbit in September 1977, is the station of new generation. At the first time on board the station, it was solved the problem of continuous resupply of expendables, refurbishment and repair during the mission. The second docking unit was mounted on the station. It is the unit through which necessary equipment is delivered to the station. That gives the capability to prolong the station's operation time, increase their efficiency. The reserve of propellant, food, water, oxygen, these are the components which generally define the mission duration. According to the necessity of providing propellant resupply during the mission, a new engine system was developed. The tanks with shifting flexible separators, the propellant supply system with compressors for gas pumping out. For delivering propellant and equipment into orbit, new transport means are needed. The new refilling vehicle progress is developed on base the Soyuz spacecraft. Instead of the descending vehicle, there is a new module. The propellant for refilling the station engine assembly is located in its four spheric tanks. The orbital module becomes the cargo module and inside of it, the delivered equipment is stowed. The unified service module provides the vehicle docking with the station. Refilling in orbit, a new operation in astronautics. For its accomplishment, new hydraulic pressure tight connectors were developed through which pouring of propellant's aggressive chemical components to the station will take place. After spending the propellant for performing mission plan operations, the refilling vehicle is docked to the station. The filling flanges are connected. The sealing of this interface is checked. The compressor brings the gas from the tanks back to the high pressure gas tanks. 
the valves of the filling circuit are opened. Propellant is poured under pressure from the refilling vehicle into the station. During the three missions, the crews performed six refillings. Six times the propellant reserve of the station's engine assembly was fully restored for mission continuation. Everything necessary for refurbishment of the expendables and equipment of the station must be stowed in the cargo module of the vehicle. Here are the regenerators for enriching the station's atmosphere with oxygen, sanitary containers, water, food, scientific instruments and equipment for repair. The summary payload mass is over a ton. The loading takes place at the factory's department and it will be unloaded in orbit by the cosmonauts. That is why the instrument's fixture must be easily handled with convenient access to it. In the weightlessness conditions, equipment demounting is transferred to the station and installation in specific places is a hard work. It takes the crew several days. The availability of the second docking unit gave the capability to develop the station's flight program in a new manner. To the second docking unit, it could be docked not only the freight vehicle progress, but another Soyuz manned spacecraft. Due to this, in the period of conducting especially responsible operations, repair for example, the number of crew members could be increased to four men. One more feature of the Salute 6 orbital station is the wide participation of other country scientists, representatives of which are included into the international crews of the visiting missions. In the technological units, the furnaces Splav and Crystal, which in full sense became international, there were performed 113 melting sessions, which were proposed by the scientists of USSR, Czechoslovakia, Poland, German Democratic Republic, Bulgaria and France. The SPLAF unit is arranged in the airlock camera, which is vacuumed during melting and for cooling the sample. The crystal furnace. It is arranged inside the station's working compartment. The ample with the sample is automatically driven through the heating zone with a setup speed, so providing the necessary temperature mode. Due to the work conducted in zero gravity, capability appears to obtain semiconductor materials with the right crystal grating and metal alloys with homogeneous structure. Various materials obtained in such manner in space should find wide utilization in radioelectronic and pharmacology industries, in electroenergy and other fields of economy. For conducting astrophysical research connected with nature study of different objects 
in the visible part of the universe, it was installed the BST-1M telescope, operating in the sub-millimeter band of wavelength. With the specially developed machine type cryogenic unit, the telescope receiver is cooled to the temperature of about four degrees above the absolute zero. By this, a high level of its sensitivity is provided. The star's radiation study in the submillimeter band could be conducted only in space, because on Earth it is impossible due to the shielding effect of its atmosphere. During the flight, there was also accomplished a number of experiments with the Space Radio Telescope KRT-10. A big amount of Earth resource research was performed on the station with the MKF-6M photo camera produced jointly by the USSR and German Democratic Republic specialists. The Earth's surface filming was conducted in six bands of visible spectrum. On Earth, the specialists in different areas of economy decode the received photos for defining the glacier's borders, water resources, status of agriculture fields, crops, pastures, forests, polluted parts of lakes and rivers for revealing geology areas perspective from the standpoint of minerals extracting. For rising the reliability of crew recovery from orbit, it is foreseen to exchange the Soyuz transport spacecraft over a definite period of its flight time with the station. The vehicle exchange is performed during the visiting mission, or the fresh vehicle is delivered to the station in the unmanned flight mode. Scientific instruments and testing samples of materials are installed not only in the compartments, but also outside the station. The space suits on board give the crew capability to perform different activities on the external surface, exchange the samples that were a long time outside the station for studying the influence of space conditions, preventive inspection of the structure and repair if necessary. The long-term mission in weightlessness conditions. This is one of the key problems in solving many objectives of astronautics. For maintaining workability and health during the whole mission, and also for quick readaptation to the Earth gravity after recovery, the cosmonauts must subject to physical load their muscles and cardiovascular system. For this purpose, there is a full complex of training and prophylactic means on the Salute 6 station. That is, the bicycle erg meter providing regulated load, the running path with rubber constraints, loading suits of the Pingwin type, vacuum suit chibis for hard training. The air pumped out from the suit causes the blood to flow to the feet, simulating the Earth gravity. The state of cosmonauts' health during the flight is monitored by the Polynom onboard equipment. This includes the monitoring of the blood vessels of the brain, measurements of blood pressure, and periodical transmission of electrocardiogram to the Earth.
the large volume of the living modules, good lighting conditions, shower, cold and hot water, heating of the food, all this provides comfortable conditions for the life of the crew aboard the station. The station is controlled from the ground 24 hours a day. The data is uplinked to the crew which is necessary to perform the pre-planet activities. Special radio link is used by the ground to transmit commands for remote control of the onboard systems. Using the information automatically coming from the station, the mission control center is engaged in continuous monitoring of its equipment and hardware. By releasing the cosmonauts from these functions, their capabilities grow in performing research and experiments. The salute orbital stations become the continuously operating outposts of Soviet science in space, which produce a great scientific and economical output.